This is a, uh, was a tomato hornworm. Uh, I sprayed this house last week with uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT, uh, which has sort of gotten a bad rap in the GMO side because they've learned how to infuse certain proteins from BT directly into certain plant genes, uh, which makes it an uncontrolled uh, experience out in the environment. This is what it does to these hornworms. It basically just desiccates them. So this it, is what it naturally does this is what it naturally without does. being genetically modified. It's a, it's a gut paralytic, so it's a bacterium. And when the caterpillar eats the vegetation of the plant that has the BT bacterium on it, it paralyzes the caterpillar's gut and the, basically sort of starves to death and starts to desiccate. And so this is this and is the end result. Means dry out. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty gross. So so how do we know that's not happening to our guts when we eat it? How how does this not hurt us? Um, that's beyond my my level of science to explain or understand. But um, it, uh, my understanding is it dries off naturally. It it, it it does dry off naturally. Most most of the organic pest control methods, uh, the bacterium and uh, even some of the more toxic substances like uh, like uh, pyrethrin, which is derived from a chrysanthemum plant, is only really toxic in its wet form. And as soon as it dries, it, the toxicity goes away. So the re-entry times after you spray are very short. And basically you have to let the crops dry out. Uh, okay. The liquids that you're spraying dry off the crop and then you can go back in and, and you're not going to get affected by... Obviously, it's not that harmful. I see butterflies flapping around behind us. Well, this is so. a, the, the other thing about BT is it's very targeted. There's only certain uh, insects, and mostly with BT, it's the it's the larval stage or the caterpillar stage okay. of of the insect that's affected um, by its use. So. And then the problem is that's when it's genetically modified and put into the corn then it constantly reproduces more toxins. It becomes a little toxin factory, and that's not controllable. Well, right. It's not a controlled application. Um, it's, it's constantly present in, in the crop and in the environment. And so, you know, some of the questions about the effects uh, of that on insect, non-targeted insect species is also there, you know. Um, how, how the genetically modified stuff interacts with our bodies is a whole nother story um, you know and so my my biggest issue with the genetically modified things that are happening today are the way that they're creating plants that allow for excessive glyphosate use uh, to control the weeds and and that's that's to me the, the biggest issue of it all um, do you use glyphosate at all not on this farm? not a drop of it on this property and and why is that what, what else do you do Besides, well, if I need to, if I need to do some some weed control, um, I don't do that in the fields at all. We do all hand and and cultivation, uh, tractor cultivation in the fields. But like, if I have a patch of poison ivy or something like that that I want to try to get under control, mm -hmm. high percentage vinegar and soap is all it takes, and uh, it burns it right down. That's so great. With, without any residual toxicity in the soil. That's great. Thank you for farming organically. We appreciate it. No problem.